Streamers who ruin their careers in seconds. I feel like we've seen like so many of these videos, but I'm down to check this one out. I like tough. All right, let's check it out. Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're gonna be talking about streamers who ruined their careers. We don't really have an intro for this one, unless me promoting my kick account counts as an intro. Oh, this video's at 60 FPS, isn't it? Ah, that must be weird for you guys. I just forgot to turn that setting off. Damn, rendering is gonna be annoying i stream i'm a live streamer now yay hey. right when this video goes up i should be streaming on kick make sure to go follow me there gonna be having fun with you guys i hope i don't end up on one of these videos in the future by another smaller youtuber <laughs> but yeah let's get started with streamers who ruined their careers james phantom lord varga Six years ago, on July 17th, 2016, The Richard Lewis Show on YouTube published an insanely excellent discovery that would end up being a massive jab at Phantom Lord's streaming career. Now, just so you know, Phantom Lord had a massive fan base back in 2016 with about 1.3 oh, million CSGO followers and was ranked 7th thing. in terms of total followers. His primary content was Counter-Strike Global Offensive, which of course fans loved. And to take financial advantage of his numbers, he heavily promoted a CSGO gambling site named CSGO Shuffle. Oh, and boy. basically, in the video, Lewis explains how a hacker while trying to get into CSGO Shuffle and rip it off, found incriminating evidence against Varga. The hacker came across Skype logs of conversations between Varga and CSGO Shuffle coder Duhao Joris that suggested Varga owned the site. There were about 1,800 messages dating back from the summer of 2015. Lewis's exact statement was that the messages, quote, heavily suggest, almost to a degree of certainty, that Phantom Lord is the owner of CSGO Shuffle. And on top of that, he has gambled exclusively with, quote, house money taken from the business. Apparently, Vargas was paying Joris big money to make it seemed like he could win or lose whenever he wanted. This was obviously a very disturbing scenario because not only was Varga not disclosing his ownership interests when promoting the site, but also gambling with money he made from the business. Following the expose, Varga's Twitch channel was removed due to terms of service violations. There was so much there was so much CSGO fucking scamming shit back in the day. Holy shit, so many gambling sites that were being promoted by the owners. He was no surprise because skin gambling had been explicitly prohibited by Valve, the game developing company, and the FTC. These two firms had issued statements following YouTubers Trevor T. Martin Martin and Thomas Syndicate Castle's promotion of these gambling sites. In Varga's case, Twitch came out and made its position clear, stating, as a reminder, per Twitch's terms of service, broadcasters are not permitted to stream content that breaks their terms of service or user agreements of third parties. What they meant here is that if you're doing illegal stuff by the standards of other parties like Valve or the FTC, then you're definitely violating Twitch's terms of service. Vargo went dark for a while after the ban and then re-emerged in 2018 with a lawsuit against Twitch for unlawfully suspending his account and ending his contract with no explanation. He also insisted that the suspension okay. was based on false accusations from people trying to tarnish his name. Surprisingly, he won the case in April oh, 2021 really? wow. and even celebrated the win in this tweet, which reads in part that, quote, Twitch can't bully, lie, and treat streamers unfairly the way they have for years. The court awarded him 20000 I mean, he's kind of right. Twitch does do shit like that but i mean i feel like Surprisingly, his win was despite a countersuit from Twitch where they claimed that they had warned him against streaming content like that violated his here. contract with them. You can see those violations in this image. However, winning the court case doesn't mean that he's going to be returning to Twitch. The 2016 ban was permanent. I wouldn't be surprised if he pops up on Kick. Go follow me on Kick, by the way. <laughs> in an email to PC Gamer after the court case ended, Twitch said, We absolutely stand behind our decision to terminate his account and he will not be allowed back onto our service. So he's still not on Twitch and it doesn't seem like he's active on any other platform. And his last oh, really? tweet was no. in 2021. Just after the court case so it seems his career is done for you know we don't know if these streamers have like i mean has he tried to has he even tried to bring his career back businesses outside of it especially this dude since he likes not saying he's affiliated with businesses when i say they ruin their careers i'm talking about their online image because you know they could have some investments in stocks that we don't right. know about and are living a lavish life yeah that's what we're gonna move forward with the idea of these streamers ruining their online images so let's head on to the next one brandon atrioc ewing oh boy now, the saying goes, curiosity killed the cat, and Branded Ewing, aka Atrioc, a popular Twitch streamer, is one of the most recent cases of people finding this out the hard way. Atrioc, who has over 315,000 followers on Twitch, was caught by his fans watching deep fake P-word videos of other female Twitch streamers, an action that made his career nosedive. So who found out, what did they do, and what happened? Well, let's start <laughs> so with how dumb. he was found out. A now deleted post on the subreddit r slash livestream fail, made on Monday, January 30th, it was, all year, was the 
first place that the news broke. In the clip, as this screenshot from Twitter shows, Atriox slipped up and it can be clearly seen that one of his open tabs on his PC is Bavfakes, Fantopia. This is a website where someone could pay for deep fake P word content of famous influencers. Now, I'm pretty sure you guys know how advanced AI is, so this shouldn't really be a shocker that this exists. It's a pretty creepy concept. I'm sure it's probably some weird men running the website in the background and unconsensually selling these images of people that don't want to participate in those images or videos. There's there's videos too. On the tab that sold him out, there were visible deepfake thumbnails of popular streamers, Pokimane, Maya Higa, and Cutie Cinderella. The evidence was clear as day and he had no chance of even denying as it. What's so even just, weirder is like he's like very close with these people too, like especially Cutie. Just a few hours after the clip had gone viral, Atriok appeared on a live stream with his girlfriend to address the situation. In the stream, he starts his wife. with, I want to say, first of all, that it is true. I it's 100% like true. And then goes on to offer a very teary apology. He explains that what he did wasn't a pattern of behavior, but rather a result of morbid curiosity. Basically, he explained that at 2 in the morning, he had been reading up on AI and deepfakes. Then he somehow ended up on... Somehow, yeah, no, nah, this dude was just, he knew what he was doing. Come on. Come he on. He saw the deepfake ads, clicked on them, and landed on bad fakes, where he paid to see the content. He yeah. also insisted that he was the, quote, most normal person and would never do something like that again. It was evident that what he did was so wrong because two days later, on February 1st, 2023, he wrote another apology in a tweet via Twitlonger, where he apologized to streamers Mai and Pokimane for the fact that they would be associated with the screenshot and their characters put into question. And this was indeed true, because the internet never forgets. And yeah, this was true, because whenever you bring up Cutie Cinderella or Pokimane, I'm not saying that this is always brought up but it was a memorable thing that happened in the twitch storyline thank god twitch is fading away go follow me on kick and actually Cutie <laughs> cinderella confirmed this sentiment in a stream where she said this is what it looks like to feel violated this is what it looks like to see yourself naked against your will being spread all over the internet the anger could be felt as she blustered out atriok for showing it to thousands of people some other reactions from female streamers were from tweets like this atriok also recognized that his bad decision had turned him from a respectable person into a deep fake keyword guy and vowed to let his actions speak going forward he did do a lot of uh like image fixing after this he 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 paid a lot of money to try and take down these deep fake sites so like from what from what i heard, last heard about it like i, I was watching a, a video where cutie cinderella, cinderella was talking about it that she's like uh she's like getting respect for him back because of all the work he's been doing then, in a bid to show good faith, partnered with a law firm, Ryan Morrison, and had the website taken down. After the incident, Atriox said he was, quote, stepping away from content creation and his creative agency, off-brand. Oh, However, really? just six weeks later, on March 14th, 2023, he re-emerged in oh, a stream okay. with a whole new project, taking down deepfake sites that were taking advantage of female streamers. Apparently, he had given $60,000 to a law firm called Morrison Rothman so that any woman on Twitch could use their services for DMCA takedowns or uh, reputation management. He also is, explained that, really that he cool. was working with Maya Higa, who accepted his apology to help Certas, a company that fights similar deepfakes, run their algorithm. Allegedly, other streamers that have been impacted, like Cutie and Pokimane, are helping as well. In that brief and choppy stream, he also told his fans to not expect any regular content from him. Clearly, those few seconds on an open tab ruined his career. I remember when the situation was going on, and it was a very, like, new problem to have. This wasn't happening even last year. I did see, like, some, like, I don't know, like, a group of people. It was a lot. But, like, the minority are arguing, like, so what? It's not actually that. Them, you know, but it's like the online SA. Not that I'm cutting him slack because it's such a new problem. It really just leaves you scratching your head. That's really it. Let's move on to the next one. Mmm, damn, this ramen is hot. Bro, like it's to the point where, like, I, even, I need something to cool it down. I need something to cool it down. Right, I'll be right back. I know we could cool it down. <laughs> That's right, my brand Earl will cool it down. And speaking of ramen, we actually have a new design out. It's right there on the screen. That is Ramen Earl, the Ramen Earl design. We have the Munchies collection out now. It's all food based, so it's pretty cool. If you guys like food, if you guys like Earl, you should go check it out. But the same day that this video drops, we also have Earl bracelets. Yeah, look at that. Isn't that so cool? We are, we're actually selling bracelets now for only $5. So if you want to go check it out, Earl doesn't exist. Dot com and you should go visit the website we have this pretty cool earl animation now check it out it's by speed mc so shout out to you bro if y'all want some animations go check them out but also since we're in the middle of the video and i want to apologize for interrupting you guys let's just hope youtube didn't d-word me you guys know demonetized i'll actually give you guys some sneak peeks to other earl projects that we're working on right now boom earl and freddie fazbear collab parody 
Not real. Scott Cawthon does not who I am or whoever runs the company now. We saw a lot of success with the first Earl plushie, so now we're doing another version, but this time it's just a Freddy Fazbear parody. Look at him, it's Earl, signature big eyes. And we also have dun, 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 slippers. But look, bro, they, they, they low key made his eyes a little far apart. Y'all see that? We're actually still working on them. Here are the better samples, but they're not done. So yeah, this is like a whole yeah. brand now. Y'all been knew this though. Embroidered in the back, pretty cool. He just needs pupils here. This is the, the silhouette we're gonna go with. So yeah, these will be on the store at some point. And as for the bracelets, there are 200 of them. And I, again, am shipping all of them. Just like with the slippers in the future, the plushies in the future, I am shipping everything. The clothes that we have right now on the store, like the ramen stuff, that isn't shipped by me. That's shipped by our manufacturers. So the things that are shipped by me are obviously more personal because I'm the one packaging everything. And uh, I just want to say thank y'all for always supporting Earl. It means a ton to me. And that's really it. I don't want to take up too much of your time. So let's go back to the video. Okay. Matt Delore Vaughn. Matt, aka Delore, is a big name on Twitch and has been for a while. Back in 2017, aged 28, he had about 315,000 followers, but now is at 724,000 thanks to his professional Overwatch player career. It's thus surprising that someone doing so well in his streaming career would ruin it for saying slurs. Also, it seems like Delore would be much further That's along weird. by now if he had only avoided letting out his frustrations on other people. This is because as of now, he's had at least three incidents that were literal career ending moves, and he only managed to escape complete career nosedive by a whisker. First, in 2017, he was dropped by an Overwatch team in Toronto Esports for saying racial slurs during a match live on Twitch. In this clip, which is still available from another account on Twitch, you can hear him scream before he goes on to say the n-word about 60 times. Yeah, he said it 60 times. Jesus, Apparently, he really? thought another player, which was using Widowmaker, was cheating and he was just frustrated. His excuse oh was God. that he was having a bad day and he didn't oh, get yeah, enough you sleep. Know. Before uh, yeah, the you game. know, yeah, every time I, you know, I, I, every time I get like five hours of sleep, you know, I'll just minimum 30 times i'll just scream out the n-word great yeah. excuse man guys if you ever say the n-word make sure to say you were having a bad day and you exactly, didn't get enough yeah. sleep you should be good he claimed that twitch didn't work for two hours after he oh woke up God. and that when he finally did his internet was lagging all these details can be seen in this tweet where he issued an official apology saying i won't try to argue or make an excuse i don't have any the funny yeah, thing know. is that he actually did make excuses immediately after the clip went viral he was dropped from the esports team with the esport president yeah, ryan pallet saying toronto esports is an organization built on inclusivity and we have always had a zero tolerance policy for any forms of discrimination his twitch loser. channel was also shut down for violating terms of service delore then went ahead to say that he deserved to have his contract ended and in a tweet he added that he was done with esports and not coming back this wasn't true though because he did in fact come back and continued with his maniac like rages for instance in this video posted on reddit he you can see again. him breaking his keyboard and slamming it in a moment uh, of rage this was in 2019 and he got a ban for his actions in fact anger became a part of his reputation for that? still in 2019 and and this is the third incident he got angry and told a female teammate on apex legends to quote go cook a f***ing sandwich the full statement was actually f***ing trash go cook a f***ing sandwich you f***ing bitch sorry for the cook censorship a sandwich. there guys y'all know youtube does anyone ever say lately, cook a sandwich so i think it's just make sound a sandwich so put over my voice this Still, happened after apparently he was denied armor he had asked can i have the armor or i'm gonna leave to which the teammate responded with leave he immediately started hurling obscenities at her saying i hope you get on. His sexist remarks got him, quote, indefinitely banned. Although Twitch later reviewed the ban, in the tweet, Delore responded to the ban saying, I have made mistakes, but this is my entire life. He added that, Twitch is my life, please don't take it away from me. The ban was lowered to 30 days. This person has a very uh, bad reputation. I don't see how you could undo all this. Well, you can't really. But yeah, let's head on to the next one. Angel Zillion OP Hamilton. Being a YouTuber is a lot of people's dreams. Being a streamer is a lot of people's dreams. We're in 2023 now where content creation rules the internet. So it's not surprising that people will do anything to reach that status. With Hamilton, it seems like he hung on to a lie so long that eventually he forgot to keep it up on camera. So what happened and why did his career suddenly end? Shout out to Sunny V2's video as that's where I got the information from. The following are oh, some this of the details of what went down. Hamilton had apparently been in a wheelchair since 2011 due to a serious car accident. A year later in mid 2012, he joined Twitch and became famous Classic. for his personality, gaming skills, and the fact that he was a wheelchair streamer. In a few months, he became a Twitch partner and had a steadily growing audience. No one had a reason to not believe his disability up until January 2013, when his promotional Facebook page was hacked. The hacker, as seen in this post, and this one for instance, strongly suggested that Hamilton was able to walk and was simply faking the disability in order to get donations. It's suspected that the hacker had known Hamilton personally. However, because the hacker never released any actual evidence, the situation got brushed off as someone who was just trolling. With the 
the seed had been planted in the fans' minds, they would begin scrutinizing Hamilton more closely. This is how someone ended up finding out on January 10th, 2013, he had been banned on Blizz for botting and had lied that the ban was for account sharing. This put him in a bad light and in the Reddit post, some people questioned his disability claims now that he was already lying about one thing. While this Redditor was only speculating, he was eventually proven right on April 5th, 2013. During what seemed like a break during a stream, Hamilton simply takes off his headphones, stands up, and walks away. He had left God the stream damn, on, dude. so the whole thing was captured on this widely shared video clip. What was even more indicative God of his guilt damn, is that he dude. came back and turned the camera down to hide the view of his wheelchair. <laughs> also, his girlfriend, Brianna, oh, aka Pantheria, God, whose dude. voice could be heard in the background, said, Oh my God. He's like, oh. Moment, oh that Hamilton stood up from his wheelchair. If that's not an admission of guilt, then I don't know what is. She then tried rumbling on about other stories to cover her shock, but the damage had been done. Hamilton turned off the stream, but the comments started going off, and in a rush uh, to control what the damage, idiot. he tried lying and said he fell off the wheelchair. <laughs> he tried deleting the comments from people calling him out, but soon after this post went up on Reddit, exposing his scam to thousands, his Facebook got hacked again, and this post went up, further confirming that he was scamming people all along. Following the incident, Twitch banned his account and terminated his contract with them. After being away for a while, Hamilton returned to Twitch under a new account, It's Bluish, and then got outed on another Reddit post. Seeing no other option, he decided to come clean once and for all. He did an interview with YouTuber Wavy WebSurf, where he said that the reason that he could stand up is that he had been undergoing physical therapy sessions. I don't understand why you still gotta lie. <laughs> anyway, his career has long since been dead, and it doesn't look like he's gonna have a footing in the streaming world ever again, unless he goes to Kick. Follow me on Kick. His new YouTube channel only true, has- True, dude, true. Yeah. <laughs> 1,900 subscribers and it seems oh to be inactive. God. His Twitter account is also mostly dormant and when it was active, it looks like he was promoting a TikTok account which no longer exists. Leah, legendary Leah May. I don't think I know just come one. under fire many times for the misbehavior of some of the streamers on their platform. However, an incident that tops many was when streamer Legendary Leah claimed that kids with cancer are meant to die. What of course, the this fuck? was a dumb and insensitive thing to say, and rightfully so, it angered a lot of people. This led to her career taking a big hit. So what exactly went down for her to warrant what that statement? Fuck? Well, it all started when one user who had donated to Leah asked her to promote their stream because it was raising money for St. Jude's cancer research. This request seemed to have triggered her as she went on a whole lecture on why kids with cancer are meant to die. In the clip, she starts off with, I think people should know by now, children that have cancer are gonna die and they are meant to die. Oh my god, that is just, that is fucking cold, man. And then proceeds man. to what lay out her fuck? thought process and saying people should listen to her because she was a bio major. And although she tries uh, saying wow, that she yeah. isn't trying to be mean or anything, this doesn't make the rant any less insensitive. In another part, she adds that children that have cancer have something genetically wrong with them and that, quote, something really, really awful happened during the genetic sequencing of their bodies. Now, immediately Immediately, people in the comments started yeah, no pushing shit, back fuck? against her okay. dumb take, with some even calling her a monster. Also, although she tried adding that people should donate to St. Jude's to help with cancer research, her message had been tarnished by the cruel remarks. Following the incident in this Reddit post, some people started pointing out that this was part of her character, with one user saying that, quote, she's genuinely not gonna say that word, and that she behaves like a 10-year-old in most of her videos. Also, some suspected that this was just a publicity stunt because she had been known for do no. doing unconventional stunts to gain more popularity. If that... Oh god, what a, if that is really a that really is a publicity stunt, Jesus Christ, In dude. the past, she what had a already been branded idea. a, quote, booby streamer, which just means that she was one of those streamers trying to get attention from what they wear rather than their content. Okay, well, I mean, based off the clip that I saw, I don't really see a booby I just see a girl streaming, so I don't... In fact, as an article on Geek Out... But, you know, uh, every girl is a booby streamer, according to, you know from fucking incels post points out she was known for wearing tight fits looking to draw attention on her cleavage and drinking alcohol during her streams and this could be true because in the video clip we just saw she seems intoxicated to a certain level she did then go on twitter to apologize for the reckless statements but the damage to her career remained it's also worth noting that she seems to thrive in the controversy because just a few weeks later she got banned for 30 days for a flash in her vag <laughs> Uh, flashing her vagina during a live stream <laughs> while she was uh, trying to stand up again. She went on Twitter to deny it, saying, "For the record, thighs don't equal vag." The surprising thing is that despite these dents in her career, she's still on Twitch with her account now having 614,000 followers. Oh wow! Okay. Surprising compared to the 500,000 she had in 2016. Yeah, that's it for this one. Let's move on to the next one. Joe, Joe Daddy 505, Ortega. 
as a warning i am going to be talking about this right here now there are plenty of ways to get banned on twitch i'm pretty sure you could breathe the wrong way and a twitch admin would ban you for your lifetime but domestic abuse is among the worst that i've seen someone get banned for on twitch in 2016 twitch banned a streamer by the name of joe daddy 505 after this clip of him in an altercation with his girlfriend emerged the video also shared under this reddit post is a disturbing account of joe daddy 505 Jesus seemingly Christ. beating and Oh, apparently he I, this kind of sounds familiar. Playing NBA 2K16, and once finished, he forgot to turn off the audio on his console, and thousands of people could hear what he was doing in the background. He can be heard hurling threatening words and insults at the woman even as she screams, Get off of me. The audio gets pretty ugly, and he goes on to tell her some things that I'm not gonna repeat. The whole thing lasts about five minutes, and every minute of it is disturbing, even going by the transcription of the conversation. Jesus Christ, man. This guy's fucking insane. Oh my god, man. Wait, is there a kid in the background? What the fuck? I'm so What the fuck? Conversation on this Reddit post in the Yo, this guy needs to be arrested, not just banned off Twitch. Dude, this guy needs to be arrested. Comments, the original audio from Twitch, although now deleted, was watched over 600,000 times. In response to the clip on an Instagram post, Joe Daddy 505 claimed he was innocent, saying, no, I did not rape her. I hit her and fell on top of her and hit her. God, what a fucking idiot. I, 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 I just hit her. I fell on top of her. I kept hitting her, you know. But it, it's not, Again, not I know I bad. shouldn't have done that. It's a Jesus fucked up Christ. move I made. I'm sorry. However, it's suspected that this might not have been him posting because his social media accounts had apparently been hacked. Also worth noting is that uh, New Mexico police were made aware of the video and traced it back good. to his home in Valencia County, but they couldn't take action as the victim needed to come forward first. Uh, Joe Daddy 505 got banned on Twitch immediately. When Engadget reached out to Twitch over the incident, Twitch said, if a credible threat of imminent physical harm or actual harm to others is made on our platform and timely reported to Twitch, Twitch makes best efforts to reach out to appropriate local law enforcement. In short, Twitch confirmed that in a case like this, they will contact authorities. In addition to the ban, Joe Daddy 505 also did get the wrath of people as many took to social media to give him a piece of their minds. Daily Mail sampled some of those tweets made under hashtag Joe Daddy 505. All social media accounts under his name were however scrubbed clean. So far, there have been no signs of him on the internet. Now, if anyone on this list really Good. ruined their career forever it has to be this dude all right guys that's it for this video if you guys Jesus, liked man, it make sure to leave a like and if you are new to the channel make sure to subscribe make sure to go 10 follow subs me on kick but if you don't like watching streamers i'll post some clips on my second channel and i have an ep coming out it's my final hyper pop music i've said that before but i'm reminding you guys again so we're gonna release this i giggle and EP, kick my feet when tub then uploads. after that i think two months later i'm gonna re be releasing <laughs> a rock project and i'm so excited for that one they're both done it's just annoying that i have to release bloom bloom was made like around like earlier this year i'm just taking my time when i release projects but i'm very excited for you guys to witness that i'll see you guys next time i upload hello everybody today we are going to be Shut up. all right that was cool thanks tough there was there were a few clips in there that i hadn't seen before in some of these uh streamer careers videos thanks